Hey everybody, it's me Chris Homie back once again. Welcome to the channel. We're playing some FHM six, and uh, month one is done. So I thought I'd take a look at a few of the stats and see how we got on. Um, lots of trades happened, uh, waiver claims happened, trades resulting from that. So we've actually been playing goose in goals. Which is surprising. It's surprising because when he played for Winnipeg, he did nearly nothing. Um, but all of a sudden, two and a half star talent, and he's really just lighting up the league at this point. Ten wins, three losses. That's our eleven and four record, by the way. So that means that we uh, we're playing John Gibson in a win and a loss, which is very interesting uh why he isn't number one i don't know but hey fourth in the list of goal against top of the list for shutdowns and he's eighth in save percentage so you know what if goose wants to play that well we'll roll with goose of sun i'm perfectly okay with that perfectly okay with that Okay, we also have a look here then at the um, the points. So these are the points, the top 20. You can see a few people in here. Rantanen's currently on 19. Kim McCarr, again, leading the way with 22 on the defensive end. Patrick Line stepping up big there as well. Another 22-point guy. And 24 for Nathan McKinnon. Hubido <laughs> down in Florida, like... That's madness. That is just flat out madness right there. 27 in nine games. That's three points a game. Uh, how? Who, how? Who, 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 who? What? Outstanding. Outstanding from Johnny Huberto. And he's there at the top of the assists as well. With Barkov just there. Kale McCart. Number one D-man ahead of Thomas Chabot. And then we got the familiar names. Rantanen on 14, line 8 on 13 as well. Not too much uh, really of interest there. Dougie Hamilton, of course, down there. So would have been nice to have him on the team, but it hasn't been missed too badly. And goals. Taylor Hall, Nate McKinnon lighting up the way right now. Austin Matthews in just behind. Line A with 9. And then we fall all the way down then. As we can see from this little bit, Goals third is actually Noah Dobson, which points to a slight problem um, in that really we haven't seen Landis Gogoranton and score a lot, but McKinnon's up there, Line is doing good work, and then Dobson is the big guy on the D for goals, which is just wrong. That that should not be the case. Uh, McCann, Ranton and Line 8, pretty decent set of people there so you can see Rantanen is feeding McKinnon line is just getting points all over that second line and Ken McCart, you know he's basically spreading out and Dobson's chipping in the points 24 22 and 22 out of 15 games we've played I mean that's pretty good we're first overall in goals second in goals per game tied second in goals against goals against per game second Shots per game, number one. Shots against, number three. Uh, penalty minutes, we're top eight. We've got the second best power play in the league early on. That will calm down. And the sixth best penalty kill. We could probably hold that. So expect that power play to drop down below 25% and that to regress to about 85%. And um, we should be very good on the season with those in play. Detroit, top of the Atlantic in the East. Tampa are rolling up their sleeves for another challenge at the uh, Stanley Cup. Buffalo, Montreal, Boston, not really with it early on. Uh, Columbus, former champions, the Devils are right up there with them. And then it kind of tails off a little bit. Again, the Islanders, Penguins looking bad, Flyers looking bad. You know, that's... Um, now, Metro Division not looking very, very good. 
the Pacific over to the west. The Flames absolutely dominating at the moment. The Sharks are up there. Oilers not too far behind. Drops off pretty sharp down to the Kings and the Coyotes, who just cannot buy a win right now. They look terrible. And in the centrance, we lead the way. Lowest team is the Wild. We kind of like that. And uh, yeah, some decent teams around us. Winnipeg off to a bad start, but they came through. We actually went, I believe, was it two and four? Or was it one and four? I can't remember quite. No, it wasn't two and four. So it would have been one and three, I think, maybe. And then we started putting some wins together. But yeah, we've got a win streak of six. It's the best in the league. Second best is Tampa Bay. And Arizona have lost six in a row. And look like your early favorites for being the, uh, the number one overall pick with that lottery. So, yeah. Right now, we're actually second in the league behind Calgary. But still, it's pretty good the way things are lining up. So this is the team. As I see, Gibson is fit. He's, you know, coming back um, and getting there slowly. But, yeah, Gustafsson's doing the business right now. So what can I say? I'm happy enough to let him continue on. Uh, the defense, left defense looks okay. Kale McCann having a great offensive season already. The first weak link is Brendan Carlo. Brendan Carlo is a new member of the team. Um, brought in for depth. Not looking like that's working out. Uh, new hook and Slavkowski out on the left. Not really doing their business. Need this coil, which is a little bit more worrying for me. But solid production there. McKinnon, great season so far. Dominant. Theoroche, Zegras, not really good on the third and fourth lines. Sebastian Ejo, not yet producing, but doing okay on the second. Um, Kaut is back. He is there as the extra man. Rantanen, okay. Jost, okay. And then Zadina and Pinto, not too great. So it's those lower lines that really seem to be hurting us. Uh, but as you can see, you know, McKinnon, line eight, they're getting goals on their lines. That third line, fourth line, it's hit and miss. It's hit and miss. What can you say? But still pretty good. So you see we've got Wallstead and Adelini in there. We've got Ludwig in the HL with Fodi, Sandblad, Benz, Berglin, and those Svensson as well. So we've got a four-star left and a four-star right. And we picked them up in trades. We also have thrown Bokage over to the right. Bring in Lejeune Heim, um, who looks decent again. So we've got a bunch of different things. We've got, you know, the same picks we had until you get down to 25. And we're stacking extra picks. We'll swap that second and one of these first for an extra first and second in 26. And then we'll just continue on with that two first and two second strategy. Uh, like I say, Lanskog might be traded out. He's not really done much early. Uh, he's got a bit of work to make up to get back to his point again. But Line is proving at the moment that he's more than ready to take over. So that'll be an interesting decision to make. Um, possibly at the draft if we want to move up or possibly for more picks. But yeah, we'll see what we want to do. So... We're continuing to bring through good youngsters. We're continuing to be in a place where we like what we've got coming through too. If you like, if you look here, I think Divine, we need to sign. Everybody else we could hold off on. You look there, Foden, Sandblad, two stars. That means we can make a move in defense. Miro, maybe Legkov, maybe Lejeune Hayam as well. We can get down. As you can see, some of these are improving. We're not quite up to date on their full ratings yet. Um, but right now, I think we're pretty good. And again, there's still players out there if I wanted to improve. And we can improve. We've, we've still got a decent amount of the salary cap 
left. Uh, waivers have been quite decent, but yeah, so far, that's the first month, pretty decent. Um, so I like the way this team is pointed. I'm a bit confused as to why the goalie is Gustafsson and not Gibson. But as long as we keep winning, I'm happy. And if Gustafsson plays well with his potential being pretty decent, I'm pretty happy just to run with him and maybe trade Gibson and then just, you know, have a slightly worse goalie, but who is consistently okay and doesn't give up games. He might not win you games like Gibson does, but I don't think we need a goalie that wins you games. We have those players up front and in defense now. So I don't know. That's something else I've been thinking of. Let me know in the comment section below as well what we want to do with that. Because coming up to the draft, I've got a lot of questions to answer on Gibson, on Landeskog, on Carlo if that's not working out. Maybe a Johnson. Um, maybe a Sam Gerrard. If we think Broberg's going to be there with Byram. So I don't know. I'm not sure which way we want to twist this team. What direction we're going in. Is New Hooker centre? Do we look at trading away Eho as well? Or do we keep him in? Do we maybe look at dumping Zadina? Now we got Tyson Jost back with Pinto there and with Kaut to come and fill in. Rantanen, Jost, Pinto, Kaut. That's a good one, two, three, four. We got Bokage in as number five. Is that something we do? You know, there's a lot of question marks over, over a few kind of big name players we've assembled a quite a roster um so yeah we basically can keep this running as much as we want to but yeah i'm not sure i'm not sure long and short of it i'm not sure what i want to do but right now i think we're in a very very good place um early on in the season and like i said i think we did lose like the opening three or four you can see gustafson is playing quite well. McKinnon is dominating in a few players just off the goals there and just off the assists. So, it could be worth keeping an eye on. It could be worth keeping an eye on. But I'll see you at the deadline. We'll do a little bit of a, an update again and then we'll uh, go through to the end of the season, do a full season roundup and see exactly what we think of the team. Look at that. Top eight. Top eight, Kale McCarr, as a defenseman, is like right up there with all those class forwards early on in the season. McKinnon is great as well, as we know he is. As we know they both are. Oh, I'm, I'm really getting exciting to see. It's really getting exciting to see what they do there. And Gibson, the goal against is low as well. Basically two a game for both the tendies. That's what you like to see. A couple more wins in there as well. And that will push us just out ahead of Calgary. But there we are. Like I say, we'll see you back at the deadline. See if there's anything interesting to be done. Any dead weight to be cut. Um, we've got a little bit of maneuverability with the youngsters we got down in the AHL. We can make any kinds of moves we really, really want. So let's see where it goes. Okay, we are back here at the uh, at the trade deadline. We will go look at those trades that possibly we could make in a moment. But third overall in the NHL for 40 games or more played, Gustafsson, 9.05. Vanacek just ahead and Saros, number one at this point. And Binnington, low goals, but Gustafsson is there at number six, 267. Pretty good, really. Um, 49 games out of our, what, 58, 64 games. Uh, so pretty good there. 10 losses out of the 12 that we got. So that means that 10, 2, and 3 for uh, for Gibson. It's pretty good. I, I still don't know why he's not... Ah, uh, why he's not here. But okay, that's fine. 98 points. We are absolutely bossing things. And then if we look here on... Summary of the offense. Do I have to put zero in? I guess I have to put zero in. 
Um, goals. Connor McDavid with 43. McKinnon with 40. Line is actually third with 38. He's absolutely destroying things on that second line. Unbelievable. I knew he'd be a real good fit for us. I knew he wasn't performing well in Winnipeg. So picking him up and bringing him over to the Avalanche was the best move for everybody. Um, on the assists as well, McKinnon, number two with 55. Line eight down in ninth. He falls off a bit, but really that's fantastic for him. 47, point, uh, 47 assists, sorry. Kill McCann with 43. I also know that... Um, a little bit below as well, Tyson Jost, uh, Noah Dobson, also up in there. I thought Rantanen was doing good with assists. Maybe he fell off a little bit. Landeskog, Sebastian Eho. Did I miss Landeskog? I know he had at least like 28. Wow, he had 28 to Christmas. And he's got 28 now. He's been out injured. That, that explains a lot. That explains why we've had players switching as well, which we have had. But okay, Nate McKinnon, 95 points from 64 games. 94 from 63 from Dylan Larkin. I mean, that is... That's a breakout campaign for Larkin right there. Fair play to him. Connor McDavid, we expect big things from him, and he produces once again... And line eight, absolutely unbelievable. Absolutely unbelievable. Uh, best plus minus, Giordano, but Dobson, Girard, line eight, McKinnon, Tyson, Jost, Rantanen. Yeah, I guess Josty got moved up, boys. I guess he got moved up onto the first line. <laughs> okay, plus or minus. You can tell who the best team is usually with that. Power play goals. Bunch of people line is up there. McKinnon as well. Points. McKinnon and uh, line eight, each posting 30. So not too bad. Shorties. Matheson. McDavid's in there, though. The points. Again, for Matheson. Game winners. Tarasenko. Victor, just a beast. Uh, Nybeck up there as well. We've got a couple of players. Shot percentages. Uh, Nybeck, 182 in terms of shots, 19.8 in terms of percentage. That's why he's a 36-goal man after 54 games. Outstanding shot there, an outstanding shot. Chris Crater is up there. Um, Jarvis and Palmieri, two wingers at the Devils, both on 30-goal seasons, both shooting quite well. Chuck. Uh, Case, White, Sebastian Ejo up for us. Not too bad. Face-off percentages for, like, a center who's played a lot. Is there going to be any? Really doesn't look too promising. But yeah, there's a few names up there, but there's nobody huge. Game rating them. Best player in the league is Ned McKinnon. Uh, Morgan Riley actually is number two. Ned McDavid, Barkov, Roman Yossi completes top five. Looks like there's uh, quite a few other players coming in, but yeah, see, we drop off really, really, really bad after that. So, goals per game, four goals a game for the Avalanche. Unbelievable. Uh, two and a third for for the Blues, but whether a two and a half just had the Flames shot per games, and again, it's the Flames, us and the Blues with the best defensive records. Faceoffs, hey, top ten over fifty percent. That's more like it. Not that it's a big thing for us. One of the worst, us St. Louis and Calgary. We don't block shots. We just don't give up shots either, though. Um, hits in the game it's not bad it's not great but it's not bad takeaways we're really really high um, not bad on giveaways and injury days yeah 107 
so far. Again, not the worst. Not the worst. There we go, boys. Detroit and Ottawa up in the Atlantic. That division is on its head right now. Tampa Bay have cooled off. But that's an interesting trio there. Red Wings, Sens, and the Panthers. Wow. Uh, Boston off to a bad, bad start. Doesn't look like they're making the playoffs. In fact, they might be fighting for that uh, bottom spot. Six losses in a row, five wins in a row for the Sens, closing in there on Detroit. The Penguins keeping themselves competitive. Blue Jackets, Devils, we saw the production of the right wing. Rangers and Islanders, not very good at all. And the Phillies on a six-game losing streak and had played a couple more in the Metro. Again, quite a uh, quiet division in terms of overall points. Coyotes. The Coyotes, boys. Oh, not good. Maybe a little better than the Bruins, but not good. Firmly at the foot. The Golden Knights, Canucks are down there as well. Flames, doing well. Sharks, Oilers, okay. Kings, that Oilers team. With, with the players they've got, there's no reason they should be down there perennially. They, they should be getting back up sooner rather than later. And yet, our supposed rivals, who I guess they beat us in a couple of playoff games, a couple of cheap shots as well from Cook and whatever else. I don't really see them as rivals, and it shouldn't be any more either, really. Um, I think the Blues are turning into quite the rival because we're always facing them in the playoffs. They're always, it's always between us and them. For the best goaltender, the best team, president's, you know, trophy. I think that right there is our rival. The rest of the teams have dropped off, actually. The midpoint of the division. Chicago, Nashville, Winnipeg, not looking amazing this year. Um, none of them would be sort of in the top three or four teams. Yeah, in the top four, they'd be fifth place at best. Maybe even lower than that in most of the divisions, if not all the divisions. Um, they'd be fifth for certain in the Pacific. But apart from that, they've cooled off. And the Stars in the Wild looking really bad. And oh my God, the Wild are bad. Wild Bruins and Coyotes. Be a good time to have their picks. They're right down at the bottom. Right down at the bottom. Some wind streaks going on. The Winnipeg are climbing out of this bottom uh, tier. Philly are free-falling. And Boston are on their way in the tank. Don't think they got enough there, though. Uh, St. Louis Blues have won 14 in a row. We're only on a one-game win streak. They've won 14 straight to try and claw us back. Um, Tampa Bay moving up. But yeah, really, Maple Leafs getting cold in the wrong part of the season now. Especially with Winnipeg just climbing. 10-point difference. But on those trajectories... It will be close. And your playoff wild cards currently at Tampa Bay and Carolina. And in the West, the Kings and the Preds. So, a lot of hockey still to be played, of course. The main reason we are here is to see the trading block. Jonathan Taves, Domi, Faxa, Backstrom. Not really what I was hoping for. Not really what I was hoping for. Potential. Ooh, cider. Hmm. I was not expecting that. I was not expecting that. And... That would fit really nicely with what I've got going on. I can drop Carlo. I could drop Brandon Carlo and bring in Moritz Sider. Ooh. I can drop Ardellini as well. If I need to, I can drop Ardellini. Yeah, okay. I've got a plan. I've got a plan. 
See, I don't really know him too well, but I know he does have pretty decent pedigree. So four years ago now, coming up to four years, he was taken number six. And they've done nothing with him. Absolutely nothing with him. And it's time, I think he played, and he's on the trade block. I think I need to make a, a swing at that, boys. I do need to make a swing at that. Okay. Uh, they're a pretty good team this year. So, yeah, they're second to us right now. So they might even give up picks. They might give up picks. What's that team look like? Okay, we've seen teams win with um, win the Stanley Cup with teams like that. Okay, let's go to uh, Detroit. It's not the rights, is it? What's the actual player? Okay, so we're gonna add. Morris Sierra in. I'm going to give back player one to two months. Oof. Yeah, we're doing all this without ranting in as well. That's kind of a scary. Carlo. Yeah, Carlo's not been good. Carlo has not been good. I think Siders were a second round talent, maybe a first round talent. He went very early. Lightning aren't very good. Rangers really aren't good. Hurricanes are decent. That might be the one to give up there. And then my other piece I think I can give up is Ardellini. Okay, um, really didn't expect some of these growths here. Oh my god, if I bring him in and kill my car and Dobson and then bring in Fody, who do I lose? Do I lose Johnson? At that point, I could lose Johnson. I think well, we can lose Ludwig for now. I'm not really sure what else I want to give up. Um, Panthers are doing okay. First... A second, Carlo Lugvik hardly need for cider. I mean, I'm not sure that I really want to do that. It's a lot. It's a lot. Okay, Carlo's decent, but he's not great. Yeah, we're really not giving up anything there. Ludwig is possibly another Carlo, maybe a little bit better in the future. Adelini is backup goalie. Carolina and Florida. It's a couple of years old, but Carolina and Florida, I mean, they're not exactly good picks either. I could see maybe why it would take that much. I mean, that would be that would be amazing. That would be amazing right now to bring him in. I don't know whether it leaves us long term. 
and that's my issue. Well, okay. I went away, I did some maths, I did some analysing of players and where I think they're going to be. And I came up with a couple of things that I didn't like. Came up with a couple of things I didn't like, which is mainly... I don't think that Sam Girard and Kel McCarr are irreplaceable. And that's weird. That's weird, because at first glance, I mean, you're talking about three star to three and a half star, Sam Girard, who's been pretty good, and Kel McCarr with all these assists. Not unreplaceable. Certainly not unreplaceable. I think... Byram is better than Kel McCann. That's what we're seeing over and over. Now, the numbers, okay, 51 points. Last year, 43 this one. Kel McCann, you know, he's done really well. But looking at them, and you just start to think, well, McCarr's 24, Gerard's 24. Carlo can definitely go. We figured that much out. Carlo can definitely be out of this. Um, which means we keep McCarr for now, but it could be a trade piece later on. And that kind of hurts me. That kind of hurts me to think that way. Dobson, we really kind of like because he's got 17 goals this season. I mean... Ken McCarr got a lot of goals last season, but that's really tailed off this year. Dobson is stepping up and is a year younger, has a bit more long-term potential, perhaps. I mean, I don't know. Six foot four versus six foot. That might be sort of leading me into a decision. Johnson's decent depth, never going to be great. Um, we could possibly let go of him as well. But I think right now, without badly hurting the team, if we got the right player back, I could probably give up a couple of pieces. I could probably give up a couple of pieces. I'm just going to decide what I want to do. Like, next season, I think a lot of the work I've just done to figure out, hey, is Moritz Sider actually going to be any good? And the answer is, yeah, but not great. Um, I think he caps out a four-star looking at a few things. I don't think he's built amazingly offensively right now. He's in about Broberg's level, and that ain't much. Um, defensively, Again, right now, I think he comes out a little bit better from what I can see. Um, so I think he might be a defensive player. He might be a defensive player. And I see him and Broberg as very similar. And that could be a third-line pairing. That could be a third-line defensive defenseman pairing, Broberg and Sider. And then I've got Byram and Dobson as offensive pairing. And then, I don't know. Johnson, Samblad, Svensson, one of those three. I don't know if they'll make it. So, yeah. Um, I mean, right now, Samblad looks really, really good. I'm trying to keep hold of him, which means probably we give up Svensson. If I'm looking at my depth... So you probably give up Svensson. And that allows us to play Samblad, who's more ready now, and again looks offensively fantastic and physical of 14. And I don't know, I, I kind of like that. It's a lot of attack down both sides. Off. If we have Foley, McCann, Dobson, they're all offensive defensemen. So Sider being a defensive defenseman on the right would be good. Byram and Samblad are very offensive defensemen on the left. Um, you know, so is Sam Gerard as well. 
So probably is Berglund looking at the stat as well. So I might need to keep some of these defensive defensemen, you know. We might have to keep a couple. I'm probably going to want to keep Lundberg. Lundberg. Uh, Ludwig, because he looks really strong defensively. Broberg's going to be strong defensively. So can I get rid of Johnson then? Okay. So end of the season, I could trade Gerard. I definitely, though, want Carlo in this deal. We definitely want Carlo in this deal. If we dump Johnson and keep Lundvik, I was going to do it the other way around, but I think maybe dropping Johnson would be better. And then we can drop off. So I think. I think Benz was like. Defensive slightly. Third line pairing. Third three stars good enough. You're another offensive. So you can go in. You're slightly more offensive. And then. Guess giving up four stars. So we'd, we'd be giving up a lot there. And then Florida. For Cider. Could I draft someone better than Cider? Do I need Cider? Next season, I'd be running with who? Dobson, McCarr, and Fody. Benz. I'd be running with Byram. Possibly Samblad. And then Johnson or Ludwig. Yeah. Probably Ludwig. And Broberg. Of course, I almost, almost forgot Broberg there. Um, hmm. I'm really going back on four on this one. I'm really going back and forth on this one. If I'm wrong on this, I'm giving up a four star, a three and a half, a three and a half, and then a current two. So someone will play third pairing minutes. A pair that could be possibly second through fourth defenseman. And then a guy who could be a top two defenseman and the best defenseman on a team. For someone I think will pro possibly, I was going to say probably, but possibly regress, that would be a bad deal. Plus, of course, we're throwing in a first rounder, which we should be able to get someone like Cider in that. And I can't get away from that. I can't get away from the fact that the first round that we're throwing in is possibly more than 
and say it'd be worth. It's just more than enough to get my penny. Um, and I quite like him. I actually do quite like him. Okay. Um, outstanding player. Where was he drafted? Oh, God, I've done it again. Where was he drafted? 13, like two years ago. And Sider was, what, six, four years ago? Almost did it again. Um, yeah, six, four years ago. I'm giving up this much. Is that a better, better player to go for? Like I'm, I know I've been here for like ten minutes. This is what I do. This is why this is normally edited. I'm gonna leave this in so you can see exactly where my my thought processes are. Um, yeah, I've weighed up everything. What the team looks like now. What it'll look like in the future. What depth we can afford to lose. What's my sort of not great players I'm gonna keep around to fill out. The third defensive pair in the third and fourth lines. Which big name players am I willing to get rid of to open up a spot for a youngster? Which very promising youngsters am I willing to let go? What's my succession plans? I've spent about an hour looking through all this, crunching data, trying to figure out what I actually want to do. I take this way too seriously. It's a hell of a deal to be given up for someone I'm not sure. I even believe it. And it will be a re restricted free agent, but possibly maybe losing a third round pick to get if he heads to free agency. They do want to trade him. They don't want to keep him. There is that. Matt Benier. Matt Benier. Okay, point a game, point a game, over point a game, point a game, point a game. Do I really need another another forward, another center? The Rochette, Zegras, Lenkov, and Devine. I've got Bo Cage, Miroshenko. On the uh, left, I've got Lillian Hiem and Leshevsky. On the right, I've got... Uh, Zadina, Pinto, and Count. I've got Coyle and Slavkovsky. I've got New Hook who's floating. Oh, but could I give it up? And, like, live myself if he turned out to be an amazing player. Right now, New Hook's dropping off. Theo Rochette's not high potential. And I've got a log jam. If I want to keep Sebastian Ejo, I've got a log jam in there anyway with Zigras and Rochette and New Hook starting up. If I want to open up for Levine, sort of leg over Divine, then well balanced. Well balanced with those four. I could give all those up. What do I lose right now? Carlo. Um I'd need a right defenseman back. Ludwig will be called up to be the spare. Next season, I call up Samblad and Fody anyway, and then trade out Gerard. I would need a right defenseman back. Ooh. TJ Brody. Okay, it's hard to get a read on some of these players.
I mean, I could do that, but I realistically, I'm not paying him four million. The hell no. The hell no. I mean, I've also got all this to consider as well. Jarvis having an amazing season. Jack Hughes is there. Raymond. Bazal, if I wanted to change things up. McMichael. I mean, Sebastian Ehos traded at that point, isn't he? Shvechnikov. Ooh. If some of those go through next season. Okay. I'm guessing what I've taught myself into right now is the idea that this summer could be the end of Sam Gerard, Gabe Landeskog, and Theo Roche. And possibly Zadina. Possibly kill Macau, possibly Gibson. We could have a clear out and still be as good for next season. Apart from goalie, but, you know, Gustafsson's had a great time. Um, I really wanted to side up. I really wanted to make that deal work, but you know what? I just can't do it right now. I can't do it because I can't get back what I would want. And that will put us in a bad place. So before temptation strikes his ugly head once more, I'm done with it. I'm done with it. Skip the day. Let's get out of it. And yeah. I've got too many figures in my head now. I've got too many figures in my head. I was giving up like three or four players that could be as good, maybe potentially, as Cider. Plus a first to get Cider. Like two as good as him. I think one not far below. I'll say one is good, two not far below. And one who would slot in on a bottom, bottom sort of uh, pairing for D. Yeah. I'd rather draft someone. I'd rather draft someone that looks as good. I guess roll on the playoffs. Roll on the playoffs. 97 point McKinnon. 85 point line A. Dylan Larkin, the Detroit Red Wings. Phenomenal season. I wonder why they don't want him. I mean, that's bugging me. I wonder why they don't want him. Um, so, two in the top four points. We've got two in the top three goals. And also, the second most assists. Got two good goalies playing. I still don't know why Goose is playing. I really, really don't. 99 points for McKinnon. 7 0 win over over the um the Hurricanes. And I think, if I'm right, don't we have the Wilds first round pick this year? Cause right now, that's looking top four, boys. That's that's looking like a top four pick to add into this team. If there's a superstar defender, I mean, let's think about it. Even if we lost, like, a lot of players next season, we'd still be able, at worst, to throw Tyson Jost on the right wing when he's played well this season. We'd be running with Line 8, Sebastian Aho, Tyson Jost, um, Dobson or McCarr with Byram or, Ger or Gerard. Um... And without Gibson, we'd have Gustafsson. I mean, really, it's the team that's played right now without the top line. But it's still pretty much akin to what we've had. Scary. To think we could trade away our top line, our best player in every position right now. I mean, I guess Byron's better than Gerard, but still... Um, we could kind of do that 
and still have a team as good as this one. First to 100, McKinnon loses out. Dylan Larkin, one or two. Outstanding season for Dylan Larkin and the Red Wings. They are fighting off the Senators. That's a very close race there. Calgary up top of 90, and the Metropolitan is a uh, shambles. Utter shambles of a division. Penguins top on 85 is good enough for fourth in the Atlantic, third in the Pacific, and third in the Central. Absolute shambles. Okay, we'll see what happens when we come back at the uh, playoffs. Do a little roundup, look forward to the playoffs, and uh, yeah, hopefully save the game, because there's a big storm outside. Has been all evening. It's getting kind of scary. If the power goes off, we lose. Not too much, actually, thankfully. But, yeah, we'll, we'll be back. 101 points for McKinnon. That's what we were waiting for. He's done it. Now how much more he can do in 12 games is to be seen. Okay, so with the storm raging outside, Detroit, Tampa Bay, Ottawa, 108. They only get a third spot. Penguins, Devils, Blue Jackets. Leafs get in through the wild card. Panthers, 105 points. Barely get in through the <laughs> wild card. Madness in the East. Absolute madness. Flames, dominate theirs. That's fine. Flames and Kings. Us and the Blues, phenomenal. We carry the Preds through and the Sharks and Stars. So a lot of the the point seems to have shifted over to the east, which is where a lot of the the champions are actually from now in this uh, in this game. But that's okay. You look at the worst team being the Minnesota Wild. And then you look at the Kings and Wild being our draft picks this year with Chicago and Ottawa. And Ottawa's going to be a bad one. We thought they'd stay a bad team for a while. But yeah. Chicago in the second. Um, okay, that's not bad. I thought that was actually going to be a worse pick than it is. That's okay. So they're in the second. Who else is in the second? Ottawa and Kings. The Kings. Ottawa and the Kings. Ottawa's a really bad one. So end of the second, mid-second. Can't really get away from that. And then a decent team, so probably like mid to late sort of round pick from the Kings. That well, baby, we got a shot at number one overall. Oh, my God. To add to this team. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Okay, playoffs, we get the Stars. Nashville face St. Louis. We've got the Sharks against the Flames, and Edmonton will face off against the Kings. So I'm really hoping that Edmonton come through. They probably should. Um, in fact, I think these are the four favorites on this side. Detroit should overcome Toronto, Tampa Bay, and Ottawa. That'll be a tight series, actually. Maybe favoring Ottawa at this stage. Florida and Pittsburgh, another tight one. New Jersey, Columbus, another tight one. So, more competitive, I think, on the East to begin with, but when we get down to it, ourselves and the Blues, Flames, and Oilers, I think they're going to be great games if that happens. If it doesn't, it means that these opening round of games were more competitive than I gave credit for. Looking in as well at the stats, I don't like looking at these lists very much. I prefer looking at this screen. Goals. McKinnon with 56. The only other 50 goal scorer is McDavid. Line 8, 46 in third. Few other good players up there, but inside the top 20, you can see a wide number of teams are represented. Few are represented twice. A couple are, but a few, you know, they're few and far between. We're one of them. Ovechkin still playing, still dominating. Still scoring goals. I mean, yes, he's falling off, but still, him and uh, Nybeck now 
his possible replacement. Just absolutely phenomenal. Absolutely phenomenal. And a breakout season as well for Larkin. You can see he's number one in assists. Crosby's number two. McKinnon's the next man up there in third. One of only three to score 70 assists. One of only two to post 50 goals. One of only three to post 70 assists. Uh, line eight, again, he looks like McKinnon just on the wing. Tyson Jost had a big season point per game for him. Kel McCarr slides in to the top 20. Um, and is identical to Berger in Florida. So they are both just, you know, two shots off there. There's like six seconds in terms of average time on ice. Game rating, just a little bit for Berger. But like for offensive defensemen this season, those two are one and two points in the league. 126 for McKinnon, up by two points. Not bad. Larkin, big jump up from 100 to 121. He has now arrived. He is now a star center in this league. McDavid, another consistent performance from him. And Sydney back amongst the points after some time off. Kucherov, 105, really good. Uh, line 8. Okay, he didn't play a full season last year, but... He's really blown up this year. You've got to say that wasn't on the cards really last season. Um, so he's joined a good team. He's absolutely smashed it. Back off. Dreisaitl looking good. Huberdo calmed down after that crazy start. 21 in the... Oh, sorry, 27, I believe, in the opening uh, nine games. Doesn't post 100 to finish. So he tailed off Taylor Hall. He was off really good. And then he fell back a little bit. That completes the top 10. But you see Chuck and Colin White are up there. That's why Ottawa are being driven up the rankings. you got Brock Besser, Leon Dreisaitl, Connor McDavid. Scary line there. You also see other teams getting a couple of players like Barkov and Huberto together. That shows you why they have been a good team. Athaniasu. Um, with Dylan Larkin, big, big. If you get two players, point Kucherov together, yeah, it can be really, really scary. Um, and that's kind of part of the reason I am thinking about line eight and does he make it to the first line next season. Um, top eight are all ours. Clough Boom comes in with Rantanen for that shared nine spot. Giordano's in there as well, but hey, eight out of the top ten spots is pretty good. Um, that's pretty good. Penalty minutes, luckily we're not involved. Power play goals, McKinnon came up big at the end. He also got the power play points. He got himself a shorty, but Matheson holds on to his shorty totals and with the points. Game winners, Tarasenko holds on there. You can see Line A actually more game winners than uh, McKinnon and Sebastian Ejo in there as well. Shot percentages. Uh, Nelson did okay. 121. I'm looking for 150s or above. So Shifley and Thomas just below. But yeah, Nabek. He really, really shoots the puck quite well or has done this year. 17.4%. That is way above average. Um, he will probably regress down. Yanamoto as well, our former right winger. He came up big for Carolina there. And then you got Kyle Palmieri. you got Chris Crater. you got Jarvis as well, who might be leaving them. So we're not really high up in that list. And then game ratings. Here we go. Nathan McKinnon, 87. Don't know why I jumped back one again, but 87. 83 for Morgan Riley, 82 for McDavid, 81 back off. Roman Yossi with an 80. Unbelievable. And yes, we scroll down and down and down, trying to find the second Av in the list. 57. Not even the top 50, not even 
a 70 rating. Rantanen on half a season post 50 points. And he gets a 69 overall rating, 57th in the list. And again, we go looking. It's not much of a drop off there, but down to 78, 81, 83. We're all just around that 70 mark, which is, I guess, important. Um, 55 games played. Onto or 50 goals, uh, 50 games played. Best save percentages are for Jones and Vanishek. Um, we have Gustafsson with 50 wins. Oh my, 9 11. I don't know why he's the number one goalie, he just is. Nine shutouts will be the most with Binnington, but a better save percentage. Goal against all that does go down to Binnington and then Gustafsson just behind that. So, so what about players who played 20 games? Did we not even play 20? Hold on. So we played nearly no games. We played 15 was absolutely amazing I really don't get why we rolled with Gustafsson 14-15 16-17 14 rebounds 15 puck handling 15 determination He's just worse. No matter how you look at it, like, Goose is a worse goaltender. He's never going to be as good as John Gibson. He isn't even in the same class as John Gibson. And yet, he's had a fantastic season. Um, a fantastic season. I mean, if he performs, I guess we have to keep playing him, right? Um, but yeah, that's that's interesting. That's interesting. It's really interesting. Um, on the left, you can see Landis Gog for line eight up to four and a half. You also see we are losing some important players like Byram. And, of course, Ranton and missed a chunk of the season as well. But Tyson Jost, he's showing. He's ready. That second-line spot could be his. Zadina could be trade bait. Zadina could be trade bait. If Theo Rocher wants to play, Sebastian Aho, I mean, 8 million. Why? Just Why? I might as well shift that contract. We're going to take a little bit of hit in a couple of places. But I can get that eight and a half off. I can get that eight and a quarter off. I can get that three off. And not worry about it. I can get that five off and not worry about it. I think we're at a point now where we can save some money. And if Gustafsson plays well in the playoffs, I can get 6.4 for Gibson off. And then we can re-sign... Players like Byram and Broberg and McCarr and Dobson. We can re-sign all these young players. We can re-sign players like Line 8. McKinnon's new deal can kick in. That's fine. In two years, you now Roche, Zegras, Jost will need new deals. We can pay all those guys. We can shift a lot of cap off this team. And it doesn't look like it's going to affect us. But is Gustafsson the man in net, or is it Gibson in the playoffs? I do not know that much. I'm not entirely sure of that. Now, team stats, 4.22, absolutely filthy. Goals against, 2-3-2. Two, two. Blues lead us just by a touch. Shots, crazy good. Shots against, crazy good. 
Face-offs, we fall below the 50, um, but it's still not too bad. Shots blocked, yeah, we don't do that. Hits, yeah, we, we don't really do that. Takeaways, we do that. Giveaways, yeah, sometimes it, it's being on the puck. Injury days, Rantanen especially drove that up. Niggling injuries elsewhere. San Jose got wrecked. Florida, nice and easy path through. And yeah, as of now, there's there's moves we can make. There are moves we can make. There's a lot of scouting to be done. But if I like like Nizev, Kaliev, you know, if I like those kind of players, maybe an Adam Bockvist goes in, maybe that frees up a spot or two. Maybe Raymond on the second line. If we get rid of Landeskog, can't see him being that much. Um, really, Jack Hughes to be really just dumped Sebastian Aho and um, try and bring Jack Hughes in. I don't know. I don't know, but it's going to be fun finding out who makes it a free agency and exactly what we can do, because game changers right now, they're there. Jarvis, Jack Hughes, Raymond, those are the big three. Potentially, you you can do what you want. Limbom, George Ed was playing okay right now. I mean, we could even sign him up and get rid of both goaltenders we've got. Rodrigue, who knows? Sogard, like, there's so much here. Oof, big storm. Um, yeah, I think this is about uh, a good place to stop. The recording, in that case, with the storm really ramping up. Well, thanks very much for watching. I've been Chris Ormi. If I survive, we'll see you back here very, very soon for more fun and games, as always, with your avalanche. Um, you're on FHM6, the GM mode. We're a really good team. Like, an outstandingly good team that could get better with some right moves being made. A lot of camp able to be moved. A lot of trade potential. Even if we, you know, at, at this point, we're sitting fourth if we lose the lottery. We're sitting fourth in the draft. There's someone we really like at number one. I'm sorry, but trading number four and Gabe Landeskog and John Gibson and whatever else we want to, we should be able to get there. We should be able to get there. So we'll see. I, I know they won't trade in game, but in real life, if I were to give you the best goalie in the league and Gabe Landeskog plus number four overall, you tell me you're not going to give up number one? I don't know about that. I don't think the drop-off's big enough. Um, so I'm probably going to be holding on to four, even trading back a little um, depending what's there and what I think we need, but we're fairly solid in defense. I think wing, we might need something. Wing, we might need something. I never turned down a goalie. Never turned down a goalie. They're worth their weight in gold and so much more. So, hey, thanks very much for watching. We'll kick off the first game of the uh, series against the Stars in the next video. Till then, y'all take care, and I'll see you soon.